The March update has dropped. The title is Sparta in Titan Quest 2. We don't get any in-game graphics this time, but in return we get 5 good artworks and as usual explanatory texts. So let's go over all the new content one by one. I will summarize the texts. If you want to read it in whole, follow the link in the video's description. The first paragraphs describe the ancient Sparta the way that it has been in historic times, with the Spartan influence extending all over the Peloponnese Peninsula up to Italy. This is the peninsula or half island with Italy to the east. This was the Spartan territory 500 BC. The developers of Titan Quest 2 don't want to stick to the real Sparta, but give it a unique and fantastical twist that was nevertheless rooted in the history and classical stories. The devlog goes on by explaining how mythological creatures are real in the world of Titan Quest 2, and they pose a threat to the humans living in ancient Greece. The Spartans had a powerful military that served the role of protectors defending the towns and villages of Greece from these mythological threats. So the Spartans of Titan Quest II were busy waging war against other human militaries and monsters at the same time. Titan Quest I had all kinds of strange beasts in Greece, from centaurs, satyrs, maenads, gorgons, harpies to boar men. The enemies in Act 1 included also animals like giant crows, giant boars, giant spiders, as well as undeads like skeletons or zombies. It is safe to assume that we will encounter many of those in Titan Quest 2, possibly even some other never seen before ones. In the first artwork, we get to see a Spartan general in his armor and what weapons they used. The Spartans traditionally used weapons like a spear and a shield, which is also called Aspis. As for the sidearm, there was a short sword. We also get a nice drawing of the typical Spartan soldier, sporting a hipster beard and a mullet. Notice that the helmet is unusual for Spartan warriors. A decorated helmet like this typically indicates a high rank in the military, such as officer or general. In the second picture, we see a Spartan war horse, which has only light armor with metal protecting the head area and only some leather straps in the front and back for protection. The regular Spartan soldier was infantry, in other words he walked on foot. Only the commander was on horseback to get around faster and be at an elevated position for his troops to be seen and overview the situation better. Which leads us to the third artwork, where we see a Spartan troop returning towards Sparta. The devlog continues by explaining that there are city walls in the art, but the real Sparta didn't have those historically. It goes on by going a bit in the game's lore. Sparta has built city walls while seeking a power that can drive back the monstrous hordes and make them rival to the gods. Imagine what happens when the hubris draws the attention of Nemesis, goddess of retribution, and she takes it on herself to punish them. This last sentence feels weird to me. If there are hordes of mythological monsters endangering humanity itself, it makes very good sense to me to build walls around your cities. Seeking a power that can drive the monsters back also sounds legitimate. In order to survive, this would be a necessity. So this goddess called Nemesis is angry about that and decides to impale every human in Sparta. I'm Nemesis! How dare you build walls? Now you die! Uh, stop! We are just an innocent couple, minding our own business. Ah! Jokes aside, the story sounds a bit weird, but it can make sense. Just assume the Spartans were all like, we are so strong, we don't need any gods. We can drive back the monsters all by ourselves. Who needs gods, right? The next artwork is my favorite of them all, showing the scene from the trailer. Here, this Spartan commander took a big hit from Nemesis, but his spear glowed 
and we can assume that he got back up to fight. The devlog goes on with, and as for that Spartan Hipparch featured in the cinematic, he has a role to play too, and he's sure to cross the player's path. This whole impaling people thing gives me One Piece Do Flamingo vibes. So you see, this is kind of similar to the Titan Quest 2 trailer. Anyway, we also see in the artwork that Nemesis is out for blood and wants to punish the Spartans by impaling them indiscriminately. We are coming to the last artwork, which also looks fabulous. We get a detailed artwork of the antagonist, possibly the end boss of the game, the goddess of retribution, Nemesis. She has two sets of wings, which gives me Magic the Gathering Angel vibes. In her right hand, Nemesis has a scale. This might be for weighing people's sins. In her other hand, she wields a whip. You don't have to be a genius to assume that it is to punish the sinners or something. The whip might be one of her weapons in-game, as well as the black cloud threats she used to impale people in the trailer. It is safe to assume that we will have several fights against that boss in Titan Quest 2, with each fight being harder than the last one. I'm starting to feel that Nemesis might be the final boss. This is it for the March Titan Quest 2 news. Let me know what you think of the March announcement and my interpretations of it. Subscribe to my channel. I have had extensive knowledge of Titan Quest 1. I made hundreds of hero builds and for Titan Quest 2 I will provide you with awesome build ideas, game mechanic explanations and more. Subscribe for more news and like the video if you did. Thanks for watching, bye.